Hello guys, my name is John Stayskull. I'm a game developer and designer, currently working on a Viking adventure game called Blood and Mead. In this video, I'm going to discuss and show how I used some of the 12 basic principles of animation to fix my player character's animation frames, and in so doing, dramatically improved the overall quality and feel of my game. So looking at these older animations, what is it exactly that was the problem? You may think these animations look fine. <laughs> yeah, I thought so too. I posted Blood and Mead's teaser trailer online. It was received very well with thousands of views and a mass of positive responses, which was absolutely amazing. I went through all the comments carefully looking for constructive feedback. This one particular comment caught my eye. Your character lacks some basic animation principles that is making him seem stilted, anticipation and follow through, but mostly the fact that your character never changes their overall shape as they jump, land and attack. If you set your eyes out of focus, the character's shape is exactly the same no matter what they're doing, and it makes them seem very stiff and detached from the environment. Stretch, skew and squash the overall shape of the character as they act and react. If that's not the holy mother load of constructive feedback, then I don't know what is. So anyway, he was completely right. Look at these animations. The jump has no weight, the axe throw feels weak, also lacking weight and inertia, and as they mentioned, the player feels completely detached from the environment. Now that's a big one in my opinion. I started by refreshing my knowledge on the 12 classic animation principles created by Disney, paying special attention to concepts like squash and stretch, arcs, and follow through, before proceeding to painstakingly reconstruct my animations. Animation in games is a balancing act between form and functionality. They should look slick without compromising the game's responsiveness. Overly frame-dense animations can also generate large sprite sheets, which can have a negative effect on performance, especially on mobile. But nobody plays mobile games, right? Unlike some games that use animated bones, using software like Spline, I use a more classic frame-by-frame -frame approach with Adobe Animate, mixing keyframe interpolation with custom in-between frames. I prefer this look. It's no cuphead, but I do have some distinct animations that would not be possible with a rigged skeleton. You can typically spot an animation that is using a rigged bone setup. They have a particular look to them that is rather... iconic. Both are good and have their place. It really just depends on the style of game you're going for, and your animation skills of course. And your time, because frame by frame can take, well, time. After quite a bit of messing about, I finally got to something I was happy with. Are you ready? Drum roll. <laughs> I think you'll agree there's a huge improvement. The new jump has a lot more squash and stretch, and general playfulness. The throw now has a lot more weight and fluidity. This new turn transition is, well. And finally, the new run has a nice vertical up and down motion. Let me now show you exactly how I made these fixes. Starting with the run, I added more vertical movement between steps, having the head and torso bob up and down. During the jump, he squashes and stretches into a ball. In traditional animation, this principle is by far the most common and arguably the most important. I also use Ko to add a dynamic squash when he lands on the floor, so that the greater the jump height, the more he will squash. Combining coded animations with frame animations like this can be very powerful. I've broken my jump up and jump down states into two separate animations for convenience and functionality. I can then use code to check when the player's velocity is going up or down and play the correct animation. This ties the character's jump states more accurately to the game's physics. The moustache is by far my favourite. It floats in a counter direction to the player's general movement, with a air resistance wobble on the down state, further selling the illusion that the player is connected to the environment. These kind of peripheral animations can add a nice, whimsical flair to your game. Unlike cartoon animations on TV, in games you typically want to avoid pre-jump anticipation, which can lead to sticky controls. Jumps should be immediate and responsive. You can compensate by lifting the knees and having peripheral movement, like I've done with the arms, which move into a position that gives the illusion he's balancing himself during the airtime. The throw animation was a little bit more straightforward. I use the principles of follow-through, arcing and exaggeration to give weight and force to the throw. I lean the player's entire body and head into the throw, scaling up the player's arm dramatically. This is the exaggeration principle. I then added inertia to the helmet and moustache. This is the follow-through principle. 
And finally you can see the entire body flows in an arc. This is of course the arcing principle. Without the weapon sprite, this looks like an awfully good slap. Take it! Come on! Or it could be like a sensuous beard stroke. Yeah, it's really not that kind of game. While I was in animation mode, I decided to add a cool directional transition animation. This particular animation adds a huge visual appeal to the character's overall animation set. However, it's not the easiest animation to implement requiring quite a bit of code tweaking to get right, and can have a significant effect on how the player controller works. It's also vital that this animation is snappy, and does not lock the player out from attacking, jumping or running. It should be interruptible. Oh and by the way, Blood and Mead now has a Steam page up. This game is going to be freaking crazy by the time it's done, so make sure you wishlist it to see how it turns out. It also helps to support this channel, so I can continue making videos for you. So help me to help you. To finish off the upgrade, I added improved jump and run puffs, as well as some dirt being kicked up behind the player's feet using the shuriken particle system. I'm actually working on a tutorial on how I made these effects, so make sure you sub to the channel so you don't miss out. So after adding these fixes, I discovered the game's overall feel to be much more premium. I essentially took it from having a definite indie feel to something that may have perhaps been made by a small team. In a nutshell, the old animations were dragging the entire project down. It's like having a great book with a horrible cover. They must complement each other, especially if you're planning to sell it. So thank you mysterious reddit commenter for your impeccable constructive feedback skills. And let that also be a lesson to be open to feedback. I know game developers can be very sensitive sometimes, but you never know whose advice might transform your game for the better. So try to keep an open mind. Thanks for watching guys. If you found the video useful or interesting, make sure you give it a like and I will see you in the next video. Bye.